casino. Showtime, what up Genghis Khan, welcome. <clears throat> Doing an early one tonight because it's supposed to get cloudy and I have it early before it also gets up too high. So waxing gibbous moon coming up in the east. First one of the day. What's our percentage? Let's see. We're at 82.5. Tunes are light. Let's rock out for a little while. Just float. Face the stormy weather. Yeah. All I know is you better look out for me. When you float, you fall in like a feather.
like I said, clouds racing in to ruin the view. What's up, Esoteric Cat, formerly Michael V's. What's going on? Love it. What's up, Super Musty and Lost Brooklyn and Meredith? What up, what up? More tunes. Gonna be a quick show before the moon gets covered, but looking so pretty tonight. What do we got? Some game of life over here. take advantage quickly before we lose sight of the moon to take some snapshots and show some hexagons. Hexagons being indicative of boiling, presence of water, and potentially electric arc discharge instead of impacts. So very quickly got Copernicus up, got sharp defined walls, got concentric geometry, outside ring or mountain range looks hexagonal. 
I'm gonna zoom in and draw over it. Alright, so this is where you can find the corners if you just follow the edges. You'll see that right here, yeah, my tracking is pretty off lately. Basically, this is what you're outlining. Woof, not so good tonight. So we're looking at this edge, this edge. This is definitely more smooth, but you can see the corners right here. You can see the straight wall over here, corner over here. And really that's due to the fact that there's outside pressure areas that it's reaching as it grows outwards. And these form natural barriers and natural hexagonal shapes. And this is due to the etheric bubble plasma emanating from the center of essentially geometry, nature, the torus, and the hyperboloid field geometry. And then at every center point, it's the same shape as well, so it's, and it's emanating outwards from the center of the moment of now. So every crater, every node, every system forms its shape because of this. Honeycombs to molecules to craters on the moon. Ultimately, it's probably due to water. Let's look at sinus iridum as another example. Archimedes. Top right corner, you got Vallis Alpis, very prominent canyon or cut right through the Alpine mountain range. Looks like a cone, basically tapers off. This is another example of electric carving, carving into the surface or splitting, maybe it ruptured, but definitely not due to impact. And also a very interesting feature, Vallis Alpis. And then Plato Crater. Also smoothed out, but you can still see straight wall over here and the 120 degree angle. Essentially circles are made up of smaller lines. So they do erode and it does meet this kind of pressure zone over here pushing in on it. It's got inset geometry and angles, like oblong. And what it really is, is what you can't see is the counter space against it, like that. So that's what's holding this crater in place, or dark matter, or air, or space, is this invisible kind of structure of nature and reality that hold things or make things look the way they do. So paper behind the page, the, uh, the page behind the, the words, I mean. Like when you open a book, you start reading the words, you don't look at the paper and say, wow, that's a lot of awesome paper. You just start reading the little fine detail on the paper, but without the paper, no words or comprehension. Let's look at sinus iridum. Sinus iridum, you can see Just not, it seems like I might be randomly drawing it, but you can see right here, very prominent straight 
120 degrees. And it kind of bends over here as well. Other features, you've got craters on the rims of larger craters, preferentially as opposed to, let's say, like right here. They're usually right on the outside because electricity arcing is trying to move to the, to the least um, dense point. And then it discharges. Let's see what's going on in the chat room. Triple Seven says, I sit on my back porch, look at the moon, and most times I can't see it, but I can hear, yes. <laughs> I don't know if I'm following, but seems like everybody's chilling. So good. I'm quickly rushing through this because the moon is basically moving up this, uh, this orbit on the ecliptic right now that is very high up, and it's also very far west. So essentially, I'm getting a cutoff view from my house, um, getting in the way, and the doorway getting in the way. Last night, when it was setting, all the trees were in the way. So it's at a very particular phase right now where it's going through that. So we've got Sinus Iridum, love this region, half a hexagon. See what else. Yo, what up, Kimmy? How's it going? Evening. And right, let me get the wide shot. All right, other rationale for the electric universe, you got the dendritic filamentary action coming off of Copernicus crater. So prominently, it already looks like electric scarring. And another recant, um, recounting of going through all the videos today and looking for impact-related videos versus electric scarring videos. And I have a playlist that I'm gonna share with y'all and you can see and tell me what you think about how seriously they take impact craters in a laboratory. <sighs> Where is it? Let us find it. Whoa. All right, so this playlist has a whole bunch of electric versus impact videos. Yo, what on? what's going on, Mark Rowe? Good evening. Sir, all right, playlist impact versus electric, and then here are some lab craters. That's pretty good for now. And for everybody who was interested in the lunar wave phenomenon, chatted with Keith and Mark D'Antonio yesterday about it, but this is the playlist I was referencing. All right, let's let this song play a little bit and enjoy the moon while we still have it.
So I've been trying to do this for a while. I don't know why it took me so long, but I figured out how to put a, a little image behind what I'm trying to show. And you can see what I'm sketching is not totally irrelevant and just theoretical. It's that the universe is structured in this way. And so it's crazy. It's not just caffeine. If you look up sugar molecules or just any type of glucose, you'll see that it's pretty much the same sort of thing. Um, molecules and elements and pretty much every particle or uh, manifestation in this reality creates this shape and organizes itself in this way. It's too obvious to ignore at this point because if you apply the same sort of mentality to every object you see, you'll see the same sort of thing. Filament going through it. This is the twisting Birkeland current. And at every level, there are spheres trying to form and they meet resistance, and that's why objects are shaped the way they do. And that's why molecules and beehives, and I'll show you what else. So I'm gonna hide this for a second, and hide this for a second. All right, let's take a look at the snow leopard. Wow, that's huge. <laughs> see if I can do this quickly. Forgive me, I'm not reading the chat room right now. I'm just focused on doing this. So I'm gonna show you how the shape of the mouths of animals and the bridge of your nose where your eyeballs are grown is the dielectric inertial plane, which exists because of the of matter coalescing along this pinched um, area in space. All right, so let's quickly show this. 
All right, take a look. this and you can see the split this is sea of serenity sea of tranquility and watch look at the mouth of the snow leopard right here the chalice hexagon hexagon or like it's trying to be a hexagon right it's stretched it's pinched but essentially this shape is this shape for a reason because there's a Birkelin filament imprinted on it there's spinal column of the cat where matter is just pinched into this filament and it forms eyeballs along the inertial plane. This is why there are vent holes, the shiny transient lunar phenomenon grow along these same pathways. Um, this is also like just our body's symmetry is because of this geometry and every single manifestation from particle to planet to comet to celestial filament is basically looks like this so there are a ton of these just going up and down and right here this is the strongest point and as it moves through along this filament that's now 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 and this is the past past and future past and future Also, look at the, the nose. You've got a perfect butterfly shape right here, or moth. Moths are also grown along the center of their abdomen, and the abdomen also looks like this. It looks like sp a spider's abdomen as well, with the legs coming out. Orion also looks like this. see what y'all think of that yo what up how we done let's see you got the impact so huge maybe when it happened the moon resonated and the material settled forming the cymatic shape of the tone of the impact created like <laughs> that's not a bad idea but I feel like I think it's simpler if an electric blast hit it and just boiled it like a boil and it bubbled over and created the hexagon, like when you pour over like hot coffee or you have bubbles that are contaminated with soap in the sink, they already form these shapes. And I don't know if you really need like giant asteroid hitting the surface. If you look at what I posted, the playlist of impact craters, you'll see that the actual impactor uh, remains. Nobody ever takes it out of the dish that they're making. I, I gotta say it's like so, um, it's actually insulting some of those videos that NASA puts out about impact cratering. Um, and I know that tons of people are like, no, no, it's definitely all impacts and there's a ton of proof for it. But I have that playlist and show me different. Ready to hit the hot fire. What up, brother? How's it going? Good to see you. I'm just waiting to give you the proper entrance you deserved. <laughs> cool, fresh icon, I see. Definitely won't miss that one. Dank moon doodles. <laughs> so I don't know. Let me know if y'all see what I'm what I'm seeing. So sea of serenity, sea of tranquility, looking like sugar molecules, looking like beehives, looking like bubble formations, um, and Mari Embryum also looking like uh, M42. So let me show you something even further that I, I was showing yesterday. It's crazy, um, but it makes a lot of sense because it's the same pathways in, and it's for real. So there's no like, like what is that? You know, you're just guessing. What the fuck do you think you're doing? Where is it? Hmm. View, edit, transform. Enter to screen, there we go. All right, so this is not my picture. I should have really had my picture, but last night you can see the nebula for reals. Let me just scale this up. This is, of course, like I can't get this shot live because this is one of those shots that was stacked. 
So it's got a ton of different frames of the Orion Nebula and stacked it a bunch. So you see a lot more of the, the nebular cloud and the pinch. And to the left, you see the curl a lot more prominently towards the Witch Head Nebula. But let me just show you what I'm trying to talk about is look at the structure of Mari Imbrium and look at the structure of Orion Nebula. I mean, there's so much similarity to these shapes and the placement of the hot spots, and it's due to the same logic that, I was, that I'm talking about here where um, we have plasma structure in the universe right here, pinching along these lines, chalice, hourglass, hyperboloid, donut, torus, right? And it's the same thing here. Things emanating that way, inertial plane, infinity sign, owl eyes, chalice, Merkaba, tetrahedron, time, gradient fall off, network, um, telepathy, uh, biomorphic resonance, um, the morphogenetic field, packing, cellular diffusion, fractalism, all of it found in the same place for the same reason is that the universe is efficient and we are grown along these filaments. Even this picture looks like a human, looks like an animal, looks like a cat, moth, etc. Also looks like molecules, looks like elements, periodicity, all emanating from the same shape. I mean, tell me if you can see it. I mean, I don't, like, I feel like there's this issue with Electric Universe where they're like, we don't see the electricity, we would see it. And I'm like, have you seen Orion Nebula lately? You're telling me that's not, like, resonant and illuminated? Um, it definitely is. This picture shows it, and if you look at any of my videos where I've taken pictures and video of Orion Nebula, it's a perfect example of plasma in action, electricity in action, magnetism and flow in action, laminar flow, magnetic ropes, um, field charge, uh, gravitational waves, or what's deemed gravitational waves, which is, whoa, airplane. See that? That was crazy. That was probably over my house. And, uh, and then at, at the very center of these rings, right here, um, where is it? The reason trapezium is so bright along these magnetic filaments is because this is the densest point, and that's why things glow and emanate in spirals. This is what's happening everywhere. Geography, <laughs> geometry, geology, culture, thoughts, language, all of it, dipolar, conjugate geometry, field modalities, one thing as everything. Just gotta say it like 10,000 more times and it'll become real. <laughs> Let's get some jams on. I'll take a quick back stretch. Stretch the old back here. I know everybody wants to hear this song.
coherent integration. Okay, so got Saturn pulled up. Gonna be a quick view of Saturn. You can see it's already fringing pretty hard, red and blue chromatic, and it means it's setting. But I just wanna sketch our conjugate geometry, our field geometry on top of Saturn. So Saturn has grown like a, like a lymph node along a network. And at the very center, it starts to pulsate outwards, creating these shells of plasma. And that's what the surface is. Saturn is like a laminar flow. If you study bubbles, you'll see the surface of Saturn and Jupiter look like, like really the surface of bubbles. And then outwards, you get that same shape again. Same shape. Dielectric inertial plane, that's where the moons are and the rings are, flattened into reality, and then counter space holding it all together. That's dark matter, antimatter, and the energy by which it holds it together, magnetism, or really a, a field modality. Um, it is, that's like dark energy. It's really, this is why modern pop scientism is gone astray is because they're using this kind of language that really just makes it always always a mystery. They can never solve things because if you solve it, then you might have to actually work. <laughs> no, that's really cynical. But um, they're working on things, and I think like you have to keep the funding going, right? Like you have to keep working on things, and you can never know, but I think you can know, or at least we can move science to this point and then try and work it out. So these shells that occur around Saturn is Saturn's awareness, or what they call the magnetic field. This is the same reason apples push apart from each other when they grow. This is why people have separation. They're together, but they're separate. Other people encroach upon their bubbles like that. This is a very simplistic two-dimensional representation of what it is, but it's really just bubbles within bubbles. All of them have the same exact shape as this. Saturn is, looks perfectly spherical because it doesn't have a lot of pressure around it, clearly. Um, but you see asteroids and comets that have double lobes or like hexagonal, pentagonal, uh, platonic shapes. Those have been formed uh, by the same type of conjugate geometry. Let me hide this. Anyway, so if planets and humans and particles and galaxies are grown along branches like trees, then we can understand it a lot better. Not have to worry so much about knowing all these perfect formulas to prove things, but you can see plants right in front of you. You can see your hand and you'll see dendritic ridges. You'll see your finger and you'll see cymatics. You see your skin and it's hexagonal honeycomb. And you look at chakras and they look like these shapes that I'm drawing. That's the long and short of it, friends. Jank tune. Chank dunes. All right, here's another chanks. And Saturn, see, it set so quickly. But get back to the moon for a little bit longer.
nice and sharp but I'm about to lose the view due to the door frame so I'll go as long as I can and then get some dinner I don't know maybe I'll uh, take a breather later but so this will be the stream for tonight and I'll be back tomorrow with like as much as I can as much space as I can I'm gonna record a quick show tomorrow with Tess Clark has been on the electric view before and I might try and stream it live at I don't know like sometime in the early afternoon but I might just record it and stream it later in the day when I do the moon so stay tuned for that check out everybody listed in my links in the description electric view Kronos electric universe eyes did a cool show today with Greg J and of course, check out Tessa's work, and who else? Always shouting out the Thunderbolts projects, Pioneers, Talbot, Thornhill, Thalus, Warnhill, as I can't get out of my mind, <laughs> and uh, Stephen Crothers, Pierre Marie Robitaille, Hannes Alfain, um, Halton Arp, Belikovsky, Ralph Jurgens, CJ Ransom, and uh, Michael Steinbacker, all these cool dudes and ladies who have really done some work. So, let's see, the Nebulas should donate plasma. Do they? <laughs> should they donate plasma? Uh, do you mean donut or donate or like give plasma? I think just plasma forms along uh, network structures. And the network structures form because plasma exists. <laughs> they're, they're a process with two sides that forms one. And everything's pushing in one way, and then everything's pushing in the next way. Rarefactions and compressions, and geology, and geometry, sorry. All right, so let's look at this. We can take a look at the shapes again. Let me know if there's a part of the moon that you want to zoom into, but really what's crucial here is the connection between the structures. So it's not just craters that are hexagonal. Clearly it's Mare Serenitatis and Mare Tranquillitatis that are really geometric and have polyhedral shapes due to what I sketched earlier. And I'll sketch again. I'll sketch it once and I'll sketch it again. Because it's just mind blowing how this has been here this whole time. So these bubbled out as they really wanted to be perfect spheres, like our eyeballs. Our eyeballs sort of try and stay perfect spheres because this is the bridge of the nose, this is where eyebrows would be, and then the nose, if you look at a skull, this is why this looks like a skull. And then we have the square jaw. These are all pinches. And then the neck gets pinched and then the body goes outwards. This is squatter man. This is ancient alien stuff. Um, this is the di electro dielectric inertial plane, which is just really a dense, like, flat spiral. But it's not really flat. It's more like... It's flatter than these magnetic pathways that go emanate outwards like this. Anyway, so these grew out like this, outwards, outwards, outwards. And then 
other parts of the moon behave this way counter space I don't see perfectly circular craters on the moon um, being the prominent feature much more so these types of shapes and they have these shapes for a reason and these shapes mirror one another for a reason they don't just sit there where all the symbology comes from. The same thing here, like the, what you don't notice is this part right here. Similarly, coming around. Other features include, you know, the formation of mountain ridges. These are really like spines. Matter really is just pulled, 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 and squeezed together to create mountains. This is what Michael Steinbacher and Andrew Hall and Thunderbolt's project contributors talk about in terms of Earth geology. And that's why lunar geology is always like, well, um, we can't discuss lunar geology because we know earth geology. This is sort of what I was talking to, to Keith and Mark about on P and K is that, you know, just because common understanding says impact craters and, uh, you know, that's what we've been taught. Just if you remove the words, then really what we have are features and then we can start creating, you know, deducing facts. And the facts are that they look geometric and that there's this type of transmutation of elements that occurs. What doesn't exist is the remnants of what hit it, um, randomness of, of shape, um, depth of crater, everything's the same depth, uh, and there's extreme order to it. There are chains, there are canyons, there are sinuous rills, lakes that are not volcanic in nature and these are some of the few arguments against impact craters as well as the dendritic Lichtenberg type figures that emanate from Copernicus right here you can see this very prominent yes I know at first glance it might look like a big rock hit this but it makes a lot more sense that these, these uh, dendritic filaments that emanate from Copernicus are zapped from a discharge versus looking like really like broken, like a bullet through glass. It's much more random. You get like a long one, a short one, random one, a crack. All these, look at this. I mean, this is so perfectly geometric. So there has to be the presence of water has to be the presence of charge and pressure densities forming these shapes and of course counter space. Same thing with the appearance of craters on larger, uh, the rims of larger craters. So it's not just small craters with tiny craters on the rims, it's like literally Mari Imbrium in its entirety has Sinus Iridum on its rim preferentially. Like, and then Sea of Serenity, which is really pentagonal has Posidonius right here, and then Tranquility has Proclus between it and Chrysium, and Chrysium is an S-curve. So lots of evidence for electrical organization on the moon, very little against it, except just really just not being able to op reopen the discussion on the moon. So tried to do that a little bit yesterday, and we'll continue to. I'm going to go back to some of the newer tunes. What about this one? I like this one. Yo, what up, Rack Kate? Sorry, I know everything's on fire. Wishing y'all the best. 
less fire, please. Hey, Amethyst Crystal. I, I shall lament sweetly. I was just being very cynical or sarcastic to Ratch or Rack Kate. Simply because, like, to be perfectly honest, to come to somebody's stream who's streaming the moon and say, why don't you look like this other person who streams the moon? Is like going to like a Led Zeppelin concert and being like, hey, have you guys heard of Pink Floyd? Um, like, John Leonard Wilson thinks they're aliens and like does this weird prismatic shift and it's just like a pain in the ass and it really looks like you're just distorting the image to like pretend that you can get closer than other people it's like an ego driven thing same thing with bruce sees all and aliens and shit like that i don't watch those channels i don't support channels like that and sorry if i sounded sarcastic but it's just like i've hit my limit with what a waste of technology and time to pretend that it's about like what you can do and nobody else can uh, versus just sharing the information. And also you can't see alien bases or alien craft on the moon. It's, it's like not a thing. So... It sucks about the fires though, that's for sure. Um, yeah, I do extreme close-ups as well. If you want to go to the root page of the channel or go to the best of playlists, I can do like a 5x shot if you'd like to see what it looks up very close. Um, so yeah, what can I say? I really recommend everybody who's new to check out, um, you know, to dig deep in the channel. Even if you're old and you've, uh, you haven't looked at the old playlist, there's a ton of really good stuff. I tend to go back to even my old videos and look and just be like, damn, like there's Mars. I have a ton of stuff from Mars opposition and I'll just share the best of playlist right here. Um, right here. You'll see lunar waves. You'll see um, M42 and Venus with the waning crescent moon, like a really thin crescent moon it's tough to get. I got like a bunch of satellites in deep space. Got really weird objects transfer, uh, going across the moon, like some of the clearest 
weird stuff you've ever seen. Um, things that look like balloons but are not. Things that look like satellites and are not. Also real images of ISS and Hubble. Um, let's see what else. Yeah, there's a ton of stuff in this playlist. So please take a look there and like, sorry, I got triggered with this, like, just there's a whole segment of YouTube that takes actually wonderful um, telescopic astronomical footage, distorts the hell out of it, and just says it's something like aliens, and I'm just really kind of done with all that. All right. <laughs> you can tell I'm pretty salty today. How I feel. Salty Saturday. What's up, Ellie Wynn? And what up, Six? Welcome. Cool name. All right, just jamming here with the moon, getting some salty hot takes. Hot take Sally up in here. All right. I know <laughs> I exploded on that, but it's just really just such a thing. Like I've been streaming for five years and you get so many comments like that. It's just like, oh, so exhausting. So sorry that you were the one that triggered it. It's really tough to be on YouTube and try and do something without commercial or clickbait or personality driven work. So anytime I get that kind of like, I'll give you a perfect example, and this is not to crap on them because they did bring a lot of people to this channel, but Secure Team like literally just takes actual footage and says it's aliens. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, bro, like can't really do that, but look how many views it gets. So we have this culture of like just taking information, misinterpreting it, and adding some hype, and then because of the hype, and it's really seductive, that kind of becomes the, the memified reality. And for me, like, the moon is already so incredible, and we can get these really clean shots of it, these perfect shots of it, we can understand it from all these different angles. So I feel like there have been channels, and really, like, of course I saw John Leonard Walson's stuff, like, five years ago, when I first started doing the moon stuff, but it's always like there's this, uh, this type of language around those videos that is like, I'm doing it. It's my stuff. It's only my stuff. Only my stuff looks like this. I've, I'm the only one to have done this. No one's ever done this before. And I understand the feeling. Oh, believe me, I understand that feeling really well, but man, that just rubs me the wrong way when it comes to space. Like, I just want nothing to do with that. I, I mean, I feel it, but I also work on it on every show, 
it's really all about inclusion and listening to everybody and trying to get a, a larger comprehension of things, not a smaller one. And so I feel like nothing has been proven in terms of UFOs, uh, or aliens rather. UFOs definitely exist, but aliens certainly, certainly very little proof of that except for misinterpreted info. Um, so I think that's where I get that kind of knee-jerk reaction. I'm sort of done with these really wild conspiracies because I've realized that the, the true incredible uh, quest that's, that strikes my fancy is the fact that Orion exists, the moon exists, it looks the way it does. It's already rich with mystery and excitement. I don't need alien bases or um, ego or celebrity or anything to get the appreciation from space. Let's see what the comments are saying. JLW followers have a few loose screws. I just go for the footage and then leave. That's fair. Like I said, sorry to target uh, you particularly. Um, but it is like I said, like you don't go to a show and say, hey man, love the songs that you're playing, but have you heard of this other band? <laughs> like, bad form. Just kidding, it's all good. What up, Joe Salamone? Hey, 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 howdy. I never thought I'd be saying howdy, but howdy is kind of good. It's the southern creep. Let's see, you got a little grooving on the Sunday jam, but it's Saturday, so all good. <laughs> UFO, definitely man-made, and Baby Yoda, cute, but I can't believe how much time and energy is being spent on Baby Yoda and not the actual moon. Crazy, it's just crazy, it's madness. <laughs> like pure madness, like, and, and with all due respect to fans who love Star Wars, I mean, for real though, really, this is what grabs attention and not the real thing that you could just set up in your backyard and like really just connect with Saturn and Venus and Orion and Uranus and the moon and like meteor showers and nebula and understand it and then write music or write language to describe the universe. But Star Wars, oh my God. Sorry, I know how judgy it sounds, but as, as a TV junkie myself, um, I definitely try and keep it a 90-10. So I'll watch some Rick and Morty I'll watch some BoJack Horseman, and I'll watch some South Park. But really, like I, you know, from a peripheral, peripheral view, or from the periphery, I watch people watch things like Star Wars and Game of Thrones and all these big shows, and like I want no part in that kind of thing. Although I understand the temptation, but there's so much else for me to discover and study that I've never seen before. So find like spending a lot of time there is just like not spending time writing music or looking at the moon and understanding my world better. Simple deduction for myself. What's happening, Reginald Roberts? How you doing, brother? Let's burn one down. <laughs>
I'm getting a little diffraction, of course, because the door is already kind of getting in the way. But we've got a zoomed in shot here. This is camera direct to scope with the 2X camera digital zoom on Copernicus Crater or Copernicus feature. And I want to show some detail. It's definitely got that red tint to it, but I think that's due to just like interference. Um, I know that some are new and they don't know how I'm set up. So I have two different setups. I have an 11 inch um, facing east uh, and I have an eight inch in the backyard, in the backyard, on the back porch. And the porch is a staircase. <laughs> and so I have one leg extended on the telescope and two legs basically inside my apartment. And the scope, just like I have like all these jerry-rigged um, little pieces of plasticine and vibration protectors for the feet so the scope doesn't shake as much as it really would. Um, right here, it's shaking due to the fact that several things, like the scope is pointed upwards. It's at a particular angle right now because so the weight is shifted and it's vibrating a lot more. So yeah, no excuses, but that's how it's set up. When you see the other stream on the 11, it's perfectly stable. The 11 has a much stronger base and a fork arm mount that allows it to be like really, really solid. So this is what I got to do to show um, different views like after 10 p.m. or actu actually not even the time thing. It's more about where the planets are on the head, on the overhead. Scallywagon door, like I said, what can I do? I think I just might have to remove this door, but it really does help. It's like a storm door. Positive vibration. Insane inside this bubble. talk about an eight inch without sounding dirty. All right, scope in here. You get over it quickly is the answer. <laughs> yeah. 
let's scope. So it's definitely getting affected by the cold air as well. The moon's been rising higher and higher, so it's hitting the, that cold air current, electrical air current, the wind, the wind world. I'm just trying to find some really good relief to show y'all geometry. And everything really looks like bacteria. It looks like eyeballs. It looks like skulls. All the geometry of the moon mimics biomimicry to some degree. So let me pull up this program and a little bit of sketching, sketch time. So crater on the rim of larger craters and then hexagonal nature. Same thing coming around over here. Same shape again. Only 9,900 more times and it'll finally sink in. <laughs> this is up at Mari Frigoris, north of Mari Embrium. I think that was Anaxagoras, Anaxa, Anaxanamun. All right, this is north of Mari Embrium. We got Plato, we got Montes Tenerife, 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 Montes Pico, Mons Recti. The, uh, this looks like a chicken foot, but really tonight's really dead on above. And it's a li looking a little less raptor claw, but it's still there. Now it looks like a scorpion or a rune. But this is from the same reason, because it's being pinched right over here between two zones. And then this region that looks like lettering, Leonide, Loud. Um, I don't know. Tonight's looking like something else for sure. What does it look like to y'all? Can you read it? That's... I want to say Mon Montes Recti. Also sounds pretty dirty. So Plato crater here. And you have the broken wall. And this flattened floor, which is never really talked about in terms of the composition. I think they do want to land in it at some point, but really it's pretty much the same composition as Mari Imbrium. And the Chinese apparently have a lander right here at the spout of Sinus Iridum, or the Bay of Rainbows. But to me, I was noting this on Keith's stream, um, that this looks like a dragon head when it turns. But you can see it looks like a dragon head, also because it's pinched along a filament, and that's how things grow. They grow like trajectories, and eyeballs form in along these filamentary branches. Hexagons form because it's trying to form a circle and then it hits pressure densities and it has and creates these walls. So, this is basically the apple core. It's owl eyes. I could just center it. So, yeah. That, that, that. Brooklyn current, inertial plane information, matter, energy, whatever you want, coalescing along these shapes. Onion skin plasma creating information. I really dig Sinus Iridum. Ooh, Christmas cookies sound good. Yes, the show's rated M for moon. That's a good one. I haven't heard it before. It's definitely rated for adults, YouTube, just in case you're listening. I click that button. Got no kappa. I mean, I figured pretty much everybody's talking about the grass. Are you on the grass, honey? Um, so this channel is not meant for children. Never was, never will be, but you should relay this information about 
the shape of the universe to whoever you like. All right, so crater on the rim of, let me just make sure I'm getting this right. I want to say, Mari Nectaris, exactly, and Theophilus. Is it Theophilus? No. No, not possible. This is something else. Let me figure it out. <laughs> it's rated EU. Nice. Good one, esoteric cat. This feature is, yeah, Mari Humorum and Gassendi Crater, and Gassendi A is on the rim of Gassendi Crater with its central peaks. It messed me up because it looks a lot like Theophilus, but it's like Theophilus mixed with Posidonius. Definitely getting that haze because of the doorway now, but you can see the flat floored nature of it, but it's also like it has all the carvings and circular like scars uh, very very clear to see the hexagonal corner let's leave it for a second then you can I'll paint it paint it one two very 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 clear There's nothing circular about that Gassendi is really a very prominent feature but let me just draw this correctly Doot, 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 doot. This is awful. Let me try that again. The mind is trying to track the crater, but I should just keep it steady here. One, two, damn. There, 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 there. That's sort of it. <laughs> Why do I want onion rings now? Uh, the nature of the universe, very simple. It's go look at an apple, cut it in half, and you'll get this shape, which is like that, a cylinder that's flared, and then you'll get an apple core. Right here, the seeds of the apple, and this, this pressure point where things start getting created. So right here, right here, this is the stem of the apple. It's squeezed in there. This is the tail of the apple, right? And so the shape of the universe really is all the way right here. This is you. This is now. This is a plasmoid. And it's really where matter or dust or whatever we consider matter coalescing along pathways that are predefined. And the predefinition is really this shape that occurs everywhere. These um, essentially, a, there's, a, there's a point or a tiny sphere, if you want to think about it like that, and it grows outwards. And it gets larger and then if it's free floating it kind of stays spherical um, and if it meets other bubbles it starts to pack circle packing or hive creation and what happens is because these were all circles to begin with, they have a center point. And because they meet other circles and because awareness or consciousness exists in these shells that emanate, it's both being created and manifesting awareness. Um, so each of these shells is a resonant frequency. The song is perfectly timed. I didn't do it on purpose, but it's exactly it. Made up of shells. The shells um, really create bubbles. This is information moving away from you. 
and time, what we perceive as time, moving away from us. This is the moment of now, consciousness. You can perceive time in all directions, but you can only really exist in this one point because that's where the densest plasmoid exists. This exists at every center of every chakra. It exists along a filament in the body. So the human body exists here. Those are the arms and the legs. Every single one of these points, point sources, is creating the same symmetry shape, the apple core. So it's a torus donut and it's a hyperboloid hourglass shape funneling in and out in out and around to feeding it itself every single particle every single body every single thought letter geometry um, tv show death life all exists within this one self-sustaining system it's it's not just electric electricity or electrical, it's a combination of things. But the simplest understanding is that it's the building block of reality. It maintains its position relative to other things and will fit in the smallest possible space. So it's smart, efficient, and aware. And as far as science is concerned, physical matter, there's about, let's say 2% of gas and dust and carbon and hydrogen and everything that we see and like 98 percent everything holding it in place so all these lines you only see this one little dot in the center all this stuff this is dark matter and dark energy is the forces by which or like the field modalities that create this force and science i bet already knows this but somehow pop science will not allow science to move forward and just acknowledge that it's already true. They say, oh, bees create hives because, wow, they're so smart. And they, can, they have this innate sense of survival along magnetic currents. And then the show ends and they sell you a car. But instead of saying, well, bees pack and craters pack and molecules pack because of the same reason, um, then you'd have to actually solve things. Which means you have you know, anti-gravitic, you have understanding of time, you have interconnectivity, so Rupert Sheldrake gets validated, um, Eileen McCusick gets validated, electrical cells, information outside the body, um, no, you know, potentially multiple or infinite number of big bangs. What's, what's interesting is that even though people hate on quantum string theory, string theory basically says this, but cosmology doesn't want to the, the whole idea is that the grand unification is that um, they're trying to reconcile the special theory of relativity with quantum mechanics. And, you know, I'm sure they've gone past this, but this was the real crux of it. And it's because the deification of particular pop scientists instead of actual theories. So, like, in, instead of entertaining Velikovsky and then having him being proven right by the mission to Venus, pioneer, and then saying, wow, Velikovsky was actually totally fucking right about this. Um, why don't we look into it further? Instead, they allow people or, or people like Sagan were so arrogant to denounce and decry um, Velikovsky immediately that there was no discussion of this. So we live 50 years later with people not understanding how things work. Like, I don't think I'm smart for discovering. I didn't discover this at all. I'm just taking ideas that already exist and putting them on the moon, and they look like they make sense. All right. It's exactly, it's sacred geometry, it's the Merkaba. Did I draw the Merkaba? Here. People are always like, Nassim Haramein, and Flower of Life, and the Fibonacci sequence. So this is, these are the inverted pyramids. This is, you know, the, the Merkaba basically does this. Star of David. You've got, um, wait, I did that off screen, didn't I? fluxes up and down, and then what else? There is uh, the Fibonacci sequence, or spiral, is this spiral. Seen from the side, it looks like a cone. Let me just clear this board. Rewind. So this spiral, that twists. Essentially, when you see a golden spiral, 
It's kind of basically looking at that top down. This is the core geometry. This is what brings Eric Dollard's work, Ken Wheeler's work, Thunderbolt's project, um, quantum physics, and quantum, uh, like, not just that, cause, uh, uh, what is it? Um, man, I've got total brain. All right, what is it? Uh, I guess cosmic biology. I know that's just, I, that sounds so really arrogant. Um, I guess that, yeah, that this, this whole universe is a living system. So you could look at it, look at it as biology. Um, I think I'm just blanking on the name. I definitely saw somebody talk about it like that. But anyway, this is the coalescing of the theory. I know I lost the moon behind it, but let me know what you think. Rune Thorson. Oh, and further, a uh, periodic table of elements is basically the same a resonant, uh, same uh, material resonating along this Fibonacci sequence. So the periodic table of elements is not all these different elements. They're just given different names, but they're pretty much the same root cause, basically the same structure of this um, with different shells and different resonances. So variants on this shell. That's why you have apples and pears and nuts and crazy people and non-crazy people and galaxies and butterflies and the nose of a leopard and a cat and owl eyes and the analemma and all these different things that resonate along these pathways. This is the conjugate geometry of life. And seeing it embedded on the surface of the moon is so validating for me. So I've been trying to share that with y'all. All right, let's see if I've lost the moon here. What up, Chris Kitt? Yeah. Little break for a second. Let me adjust the scope. I think that's it for me. I lost the moon, it's pretty high overhead, and the tracking went awry for some reason. So it just went over to Fommel out, I believe. Let me see, is that the star? Yeah, Fommel out. 
and I defocused it so we can just see some of the cool light effects that happen when you defocus the light wave or the perturbation in the field that we experience as light. Light also exists along these same types of things, rarefactions and compressions. So we see light as like pinches, essentially. So right here, the white, like defocused light is hitting the center of the scope and the blackness in the center is due to the fact that the light is being stretched by the center of the black piece on the scope. But really it's just, it's fascinating because the, the concept here is that imagine you didn't see focused. Everything would be coming at us in this way intense way, like our senses would be overwhelmed. So the limitation by virtue of these plasma, bu bubble, bu plasma bubbles um, it helps us actually exist in limited amount of, of information um, in order to digest it and comprehend it and be able to actually exist as opposed to being overwhelmed by information and light. So pretty fascinating way to look at it. I'm going to head out to dinner. It was great chatting with y'all. And let's see what the chat's saying. We'll see. Maybe I'll get on a little bit later. But right now I'm getting crazy hungry. And I think I've made my point <laughs> so many times. I appreciate everybody listening. Kimmy, thanks so much. Rune Thorson, Ellie Wynn and the cats. Esoteric cat. I got a lot of cats. Amethyst Crystal, thank you. Chris Kitt, welcome. And please uh, check out previous videos and the description of this video for links and more things. Electric Universe channels, etc. And gear and music. Joe Salamone, have a great one. Super Musty and Triple Seven and Howie and Rack Kate. Yeah, sorry about earlier. <laughs> Didn't mean to, to go crazy there. So that's it. King is Khan and ready to hit the hot fire. And I know Bob was here earlier and that's all I got. All right, everybody. Have a great rest of your night. Enjoy it. Be well. Be safe. I'll catch you soon. Let's see what we go out on. <laughs> Thank you.
Space 